this is a metallic cat stud out of Marauded Sly Cat. This is the other one I'm going to show at the fraternity. Uh, Kevin Knight, which is my father-in-law, and Jeremy Barwick on this horse. He, uh, he started off a little sluggish yesterday at the pre-work. Not bad, but uh, just a little bit sluggish, like I said. Um, I, uh, I tried to kind of just keep it confidence building and just work the cow. I, uh, hopefully, hopefully he'll get a little sharper today. He kind of has that tendency a little bit anyway. I, I find some of these studs uh, a little more laid back and things like that. And they, through the summer, they, they tend to slow down and um, get a little bit too nonchalant. And uh, he's kind of perked back up now that the weather's cooled off. And I tried to not overdo anything during the summer. I, I felt like I had him pretty trained. Oh, by June or so. Um, I'm not saying all the way trained, but he definitely knew what the job was. And I kind of just tried to back off through the derby and that sort of stuff. Um, and now it's it's as it's cooled off, he's kind of got a little more spark back to him. It seems this is uh, this is kind of my favorite time of year working horses, getting ready for the fraternity, our most uh, exciting show. The weather's nice and cool, and you know everybody's pretty excited. But uh, RL and I tend to work together a lot, uh, particularly this time of year. But I think that's always important to watch other people and learn from them. Not uh, you can't totally change what you do based on what anybody else is doing but you can always you can always pick up something that you need to do a little better and then integrate it slowly into your program used to and I was before I'd trained a lot of horses I would go to a show and see what somebody done in the practice pen and think that was really good I'd go home and think I had to get that done on Monday and uh, that's not a very good idea you have to if you're gonna make some changes uh, it's important to be aware of it, but do it slowly without confusing your horse, confusing yourself, and things like that. And you just kind of learn those things as you as you go. This cow doesn't have a holt real strong. I'll just kind of go back and forth a little bit, try to keep him kind of thinking. This horse doesn't necessarily zip around quite as much as I really like, but I'm trying to, uh, he's got a lot of good things and I'm trying to um, compromise again, I guess, if you will. Some of the guys that are really, really good at this, like Lloyd and Austin, they're able to uh, do well on just about whatever. Everybody kind of has their certain horses, the type of style that fits them better. Uh, that's something that I've struggled with. I've tended to be able to do pretty well on a horse that really fits me, but then maybe not as well on one that that doesn't. So I'm trying to be better about that, hopefully. And just pick my spots to when the cow allows for it to kind of quicken this horse up a little bit. He's always been really smart about a cow. That was why he got solid early. He got his feet tangled there for some reason. Hopefully this next cow will get a hold a little stronger because that cow like that is kind of boring for me to work. You got to do it sometimes, but it doesn't seem real fun. Hopefully this cow can wake him up just a little more. You know, before I had hauled, if I was getting, if I was working that morning to go show in Fort Worth, I thought I had to get an absolute perfect work. Otherwise, I wasn't going to do any good at all. And I'd put a lot of stress on that and um, beat my head against the wall quite a bit. But after hauling, you you end up realizing that you're going to 
you're going to go to the herd quite a few times where you maybe didn't, didn't feel that prepared or you know mo more often than not when I was hauling I just worked the flag before I showed and you what you realize is that you can you can still get showed without having a perfect work. You can make the most of the situation. You know, as long as you're aware of what your horse's strengths and weaknesses are. And at the end of the day, if you're showing a good horse, it's really about what cows you cut and how you get tapped off. And so it, it's made the it's made the preparation easier for me. I think this horse has a good uh, look on a cow. He's better on a cow that's out away from him, kind of. So, it'd be my job to try and cut cows like that when I go show. It's easier said than done sometimes, but you just do the best you can. He's feeling good right there. Getting smart right there, ready really good. I'm going to look for spot now. Whenever, if he's not being very good, I might work one cow or two cows and then have somebody walk him around or tie him up to the fence and then I come back and do it again and maybe again, but try not to ever get him too hot and too sweaty. Uh, I feel like if you do that too much, they uh, they tend to get slower and number so I just try to yeah just try not to get him too hot whereas like the bay mare I was on earlier it certainly doesn't hurt her to get a little bit warmed up and and stay that way for a while but on a horse like this I don't think that's the right approach <laughs> 